Okay. Uh, a quick one. So a quick recap. Uh, I think we where we stopped uh, the previous week on the looking at the fuzzy logic and the fuzzy set in a comp how to represent it. Okay, so let's look at the crisps and the fuzzy sets for the short, average, and tall man. So in this case, uh, we want to classify the uh, men into three types uh, of three sets: short man, average man, and the tall man. Now, this is a comparison of the three types of men. Sorry for the women here. I think. This, this book is talks only about men. Uh, so we have short average. So for the crisp set, uh, crisp set, you can see short is actually anything uh, less than 170 over here. And then for average will be between 170 and 180. And then tall will be uh, 180 to 210. Now, if you look at it closely as a person, right, you'll find that this is a bit, uh, if I may use the word, uh, a bit uh, maybe not so accurate, which is uh, not fair. Right? You say, oh, I'm only 181. You call me, uh, you, I, I'm, uh, no, uh, I'm 179, for example. Uh, and you say that I'm considered average, I'm not tall. right? So the same thing applies, no? uh, especially for short ones. Huh? I say, I'm 169, you call me short, so I don't like to be called short. So you can imagine this is changed to uh, thin, average, and fat. Right, you call me fat, uh, 181. You know, I'm just about slightly above average. I think the word you use is uh, horizontally challenged for meaning fat. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so it, it, it's, it's not the way we humans uh, like to describe things. Huh? So we don't like that. But this is for the using the crisp sets, boolean, huh? either short or average or tall. Now, in the case of your Fuzzy, if you were to do the same thing for fuzzy, you can see here, what, what we did here is that we actually divided the three, the three classes into uh, three memberships, short, average, and tall. We still have that, but notice that here, if you're 179, oh, sorry, 169 here, over here, right? 169 over here, you are actually, I uh, don't know, maybe easier to look at this. Uh, uh, this is a 184, uh, 184 one one eight cm. So 184 cm, you're considered uh, 0.4 um, degree of membership. So degree of membership is 0.4 for tall, which you are 0.4 tall. At the same time, you, you also belong to the other group, which is your average, average uh, tall man, which is 0.1. So you belong to two classes. Actually, if you look at it slowly, I also want to draw your attention that it's actually not absolutely correct. There's another one here, which actually normally we don't talk about this. Can someone tell me what, what, what's the other point which we have not highlighted? So we see here, the short membership actually is from here, right? 150 to 170. Now what about 170 onwards to 210? What's the membership for short? It'll be zero. So actually what, there's another one here, over here, which is you belong to the short class of people, uh, uh, the height is shorter, with a zero, zero membership. So actually, for any one value here, there's actually more than uh, what you see here. So actually it's correct to say it's 0 0.1, 0 0.4. At the same time, there's also one more here, which is zero for short. Right? So please remember that. So the representation now for the uh this is your crisp set, right? So your subset A and your subset uh, uh what do you call it? the subset uh this is a fuzzy uh, subset A and this is your Chris subset A. Right, inside inside x now the typical functions that can be used to represent a fuzzy set are your sigmoid just now we shown before and your gaussian and your pi now however if you were to use such uh, sigmoid gaussian and the pi uh, it is a uh, uh, takes a more more time in terms of computation so therefore in practice we actually uh, Use the linear fit approximation, as we said before. I think this uh, in earlier earlier this week, I think there was a question from one of the students asking, why wh when do we use uh, in, in your aside, in your last part of your lab? Uh, do we use the trapezoidal? Do we use the Gaussian? Do we use the uh, linear approximation, which is your uh, what do you call it, which is your uh, 
triangle, right? So this other linear approximation because it actually uses less time to co to calculate. So that's the that's the advantage of a linear fit, and I think the results actually show that there's not much difference, very slight, which is actually can be accepted. So for example, the fuzzy set of tall men shown previously can be represented as a fit vector now. So that I see here. Uh, the first one probably is your, uh, no, okay, for for the, I think the uh, 180 will be here, okay, zero tall man, uh, the uh, the membership here, huh, right, and then the, uh, this is a fit factor, 0.5, and then one more is one, so it's for, for, for the tall man, right, average man is uh, zero for 165, uh, anything, uh, anything, anything, Below 165 is zero membership, and then uh, 175 is uh, uh 175 is a, the peak is a one, and then the other one is uh, uh 185. Anything above 185 is actually zero, and for short, you expect the same thing. 160 is a uh, one over here, and then the 0.5 is a uh, 165 up okay, here, and then zero onwards. Uh, 170 onwards is a uh, zero membership. Alternatively, you can also do it this way, right? Uh, this is a simpler fit. Of course, up to you to define, right? So in this case, uh, you only use two of them, right? Zero for 180. Uh, anything above, anything less than 180 is zero. Anything more than 190 is a one, right? So this is one one way for this two, right? for this two only, yeah? because you can see here, actually, uh, it's easier to define this way rather than the earlier one, which is actually based, based on three values. Now let's look at the one of the Sir. major yes. Oh, so if let's say if it's three values, then how will we consider it? Would... This one is it? Yeah. This one actually is uh, the way you describe this uh, membership. That's all. You see here, you know, uh, if we use one six five, actually you have to okay. What is it? Short man is one six five over here. So you have to actually find the point. So it's actually defining a point in between. So if you use two, uh, I I just know that uh, no basically it's asking you if if i give you two values here how can you reproduce this graph for short and for tall and short so i know that anything above uh anything less than 180 is actually zero i know already anything more than uh, one 190 is a, is a one in between i just drawing these two two points so in a way uh it will be uh what i call it, uh you you know it right so um so I think the of course uh, there's in some books they put two, uh, but uh, in most cases they put three. So you can see because average is actually quite well defined. You can see here, right? I and see. I think also depends on, depends on your I uh, depends on your uh, what do you call it? the function that you use. So this one actually is uh, you can see it's actually uh, you can assume correctly that this is a, a triangle, right? You know that anything less than one six five is zero. Anything more than any one thing more than one one eight five is also zero. Then somewhere in, in between one seven five there's a one. So you have no choice but to just draw draw drawing the lines and become a triangle. So there's an assumption on, on the part. Oh okay. So if, if let's say I give the value one eight uh one eight zero, then would it be considered as wait, wait, wait. Which, which one? Uh, if, or let's, uh, if let's say one eighty, if if the value red was 180, would it be considered as average or tall? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, 180. Uh. Mm. Uh, no, this is actually the fit vector which actually defines your memberships. That's all. So when you define this, if you're, if you're looking at the 180 uh, actual value, uh, then you say, uh, my friend is 180 uh, cm tall. So what, what is the membership for him? So you, you plot, you, you basically, Look at these three uh three graphs here. If you, you find a point one eighty here, right? One eighty would be you draw a line up here. Let me see if I can draw this. Let me see. Can this there a line? No line, only pen. Okay, never mind. So one eighty. Okay, one eighty will be. Oops, sorry. Oh, <laughs> sorry, uh, I didn't know that. Okay, this one is a uh, forward line. Okay, 180 here. So 180, you see where that's where that's intersect intersect at about 0 0.6. So you'll be 0 0.6 average, uh, zero tall, and also zero short. 
You follow? Or you try oh. another example. Okay. Uh, let's say one, one, one eight seven. No, one eight seven. I can, can, I can. Can you see? I, okay, I still can see. Uh, one eight seven around here. So one eight seven will be what? Uh, average. What's the membership for average? It will be zero. Membership for short also zero, but membership for tall is about uh, 0 0.6. Right? So, uh, uh, hang on. Uh. Why can I erase? Okay, now my uh, pointer laser. Okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, now. Now, the. Continuing, uh, I think one of the major differentiation and major advantage, the strength of your fuzzy expert system is that they, they use the what you call linguistic variables. And of course, on top of linguistic variables, there's something also called linguistic hedges, which we will discuss later on. So at the root of your fuzzy set theory lies the idea. This is one of the strengths uh, of your uh, fuzzy set uh, theory, which is your linguistic variables. As some of you may know, because it's a, it's called the uh, linguistic, uh, what you call it, linguistic uh, variable. So it comes from the word lang linguistic or language. So because it's using language to describe certain things, actually it's quite easy to understand how the system works. Let's continue. What is the linguistic variable? A linguistic variable is actually a fuzzy variable in the context of your fuzzy logic systems. For example, right, the statement John is tall. So you can see, all of us can understand right, that uh, John is tall. Im implies that the linguistic variable, John, takes the linguistic value of tall. So John is a linguistic variable. So this variable is assigned a value of tall. Right, so in our case, um, <clears throat> what, what for EBN, what would it be, right? So the EBN will be our, our uh, we have area, we have curvature, we have color, we have impurities, those will be your linguistic variable. So think of it as a, just a variable. But in this case, the variable itself is actually self-explanatory, easy to understand. So then you, you assign a value. Uh, is my area large, average, or small? Is my color white, not white, or dark? Right? Those are your linguistic uh, values assigned to that variable, in this case, called John. So in the expert system, all right, so can see here, if I do not tell you, right, <laughs> it is actually in a way similar to the lectures three, four weeks ago, which is your expert system using the, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, rule base and also your uh, uncertainty management uh, system, I right? can see it because at the end, at, at the core of, of this uh, system is that expert system is that we use such rules to represent knowledge. So in the fuzzy expert system, your linguistic variables, right, wind sailing, are used in the fuzzy rules. So now it's a fuzzy rules, uh, as we see later on. For example, if your wind is strong, so the wind is assigned a value of strong, then your sailing then is assigned will be given a value of good. So if wind is strong, then you can sail. But again, it's a, in a way, it's a recommended system. Another example, if the project duration is long, if your project take a long time to complete, then your completion risk is high. So again, it's a, uh, recommend, it is a recommendation telling you that uh, uh, the, the risk is high. Now, if the speed is slow right, for, for a car system, if you're driving a recom uh, expert system for the car, the stopping distance is short. Right? So you can see this is your linguistic uh, variable and these are your linguistic uh, uh, values assigned to it. So the range of possible values of a linguistic variable represents the universe of discourse. And again, this question was asked before, what do you mean by universe of discourse? So universe of discourse of that variable. For example, your universe of discourse of a linguistic variable speed, right? What is the uh, universe of discourse of your linguistic variable speed, right? Would then have the range of zero to 220 kilometers an hour. It's basically representing speed, right? We'll have that uh, range, right? We'll have the range, uh, to 220 kilometers an hour. And, and within that range, within that units of discourse, you then, right, so in this case, our units of discourse is 150 to 210, basically the height 
height is like height of the of the, of the of the man or the or the person. So in this case, it will be if we if we're doing for speed within the range of zero to two twenty, right? Uh, it will be you here can see that I will assign five uh uh memberships. Very slow, slow, medium, fast, and very fast. Now, on top of that, the linguistic variable, speed, for example, carries with it the concept of fuzzy set qualifiers called hedges. Actually, actually has been introduced here. We just didn't realize that. Uh, we'll explain further. Now, what are hedges? Hedges are actually terms uh, that modify the shape of your fuzzy set. For example, you can see here, the hedge here is very, right? So in this case, it, it, it modifies the shape of that uh, uh, variable, slow, right? So it, it changes it, varies the, the, the it modifies, uh, so it becomes very slow, right? They include adverbs, so these are the common uh, hedges, which are very, somewhat, quite, more or less, or slightly. So if we throw it inside here, so it becomes what? Very slow, somewhat slow, quite slow, Slow, more or less slow, and slightly slow. Right? Again, you can sense. Uh, I think uh, you can sense that actually all these words actually means different things. There are some some slight differences between very slow and somewhat slow, right? Or slow and slightly slow. Right? But exactly what it is, we won't know. Right? So we, we just use it, uh, you know, in the everyday language. But you know the different thing. Now, what what does it mean mathematically? So here we have uh, examples. So this is the membership function for your shot. So over here, the line goes down. All right? Now, if I change it to very short, so actually the, the line here is no longer straight. Actually, it bends it. Now, if you look at this side here, tall and very tall. So the, the curve itself will no longer be from here. It goes down. It's actually goes from, from here. It curves down. Now, what does it mean? How does it, uh, is it uh, realistic? Is it logical to, to have uh, used such terms? Let's get it over here. Now, early on, we talked about uh, someone with a 185 cm in height. My height is 185 cm, so therefore, it will be 0. 0.5 <coughs> membership for tall. You see here? <coughs> you see here? <coughs> Sorry. <yeah. coughs> So you see here, 185 cm will be what 0.5 membership for tall. Now, I want now want to measure against a very tall class. Now instead of calling this membership as tall, I will change it to very tall, right? So there's no tall anymore. So it's very tall. So what is the membership? As you can see here, on the same in the same height of 185 cm, my membership to that class of uh, very tall people is only. 0.18 or 0.15, so it does make sense. Uh, I am, uh, I my, I have, uh, I have, uh, say for example, one million ringgit in my bank account. I'm considered rich, but if I want to compare myself to the super rich uh, or very rich, right? But one million that I have in my bank account may not qualify me to be a strong member. I can only be 0.15. Membership, whereas if I uh, an early on case, the rich is actually is only is 0.5, it's a higher membership. So it basically measures the strength of the membership to that particular uh, class, right? Huh. What else are there? How do they change? So uh, I can see here, this is actually uh, the different types of hedges a little, right? The 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 so of uh, the gray line here, the straight line here actually is the uh, the normal uh, representation, right? So it can be slow, can be uh, fast, can be tall, can be short, right? Basically, this is a uh, uh, we're using the triangular fun me membership function as a representation as my default. Now, what happens if I use the word uh, where a little? If I use the hedge a little, right? It will bend it down. How much does it bend down? It's actually power of one point three. Slightly is 1.7, so actually bends it further down. Very now is a 
uh, power of two and then extremely it will be power of three. So you can see that uh, for the same value in any of these cases, I will still have membership belonging to a little, slightly, very, and extremely. But the, the actual membership value will change from here to the lowest being here. A little, slightly, very, extremely. So on the other side, there's also, uh, if you continue, there's also very, very, right? So very, very is actually much stronger now, stronger than extremely. Uh, so in a way, if you say that actually um, it's not so nice English uh, because they're very, very tall, very, very short, uh, things like that. On the other hand, they also have uh, now, this case uh, I can see here more or less actually means the same thing. It will change the, uh, the graph itself to a concave now. This is convex and this is concave. It's a square root now. So actually, uh, if you have the same value, the membership now will be stronger uh, rather than compared to just a short or this now is more or less short, right? So it's actually stronger now. The more or less is actually have the same mathematical expression compared to somewhat square root of that membership. Indeed, it's actually basically a sigmoid on each side. So okay, this is broken up into two parts. Right? If the actual value is uh, less than 0.5, you use this. If more than 0.5, you use this. Operations of the fuzzy sets. How does your fuzzy set operate? What are the operations? How do you use them? Right. So this classical set theory was developed in the late 19th century by George Cantor, whereby he described how the crypt sets can interact. Now these interactions are called then called the in, in operations. So here, uh, so we have A. Right, if uh, this is on the crypt set, the uh, Cantor set is on crypt set, not A. So not A will be things outside the uh, set A, and then containment. Now I need, need to move a bit faster because I need to complete this uh, lecture today, so I can start a new one on the Friday. We have intersection. Intersection will be where the two sets combine, where the two sets overlap. So intersection union will be uh, it's uh, all uh, combination of uh, both A and B. Complement. So this is actually more. The, uh, now for the crypt sets, uh, so the to answer that, uh, to actually describe what's the complement of your crypt sets, who does not belong to the set, who does not belong to set A will be outside of set, set A. That is your set A. Now for fuzzy, equivalent will be instead of who does not belong, you ask how much do elements not belong to the set A. Of course, it's not shown here. This is on the, only shown on the crypt sets. So the complement of a set is the opposite of this set. For example, if you have a set of tall men, its complement is a set of not tall men. When we remove the tall men set from the universe of this course, of that height, uh, we obtain the complement. So if A is the fuzzy set, its complement is this, again, this sign, uh, which represents complement or not. Right, so the membership for this uh, complement can be found from this. So say one minus the, the membership for uh, the actual uh, uh, set itself. So this is uh, moving along. We have this containment for the crypt sets. It will ask you the question: Which sets belong to which other sets? This is your containment. This is your uh, visualization contained in B. What's what is uh, how much is a set A contained in B? Right. And fuzzy will be which sets belong to other sets. Now, similar to what we call the Chinese box, uh, a set can contain other sets. I think they have uh, boxes within boxes. The smaller set is called a subset. For example, the set of tall men contains all tall men. Very tall men is a subset of tall men. So basically, it's a subset, right? Now, however, tall men set is just a subset of the set men. So you can see uh, gradually it moves up into larger sets. In your crypt sets, all elements of subset entirely belong to a larger set. So in the fuzzy sets, however, each element can belong less to the subset than to the larger set. Just as you, you can still belong to the subset, but of course the numbers will keep uh, decreasing as you move further, further down into sub, sub and subsets. Elements of the fuzzy subset have a smaller membership in it than in the larger set. Intersection, uh, which set belongs to both sets? But of course, we're using fuzzy, you're no longer asking which set, which element belongs to both sets. You're asking how much of the element is in both sets. There's a degree of membership now. There's a degree now. So in your classical set theory, an intersection between two sets 
contains the elements shared by these sets. For example, if the intersection of a set of tall men and the set of fat men is, is the area where these two sets overlap, so we have uh, one point to see how many tall men are also fat. So in fuzzy sets, an element may partly belong to both sets, so with different memberships. So I think that's the main thing here, basically. Uh, in the fuzzy set theory, uh, you can belong to different sets, but with different degree of membership. Unlike the Chris set, sets, either you are tall or short. In this case, you can be both tall and short. Right, that's that's the part which is very unique to fuzzy uh, expert system or fuzzy sets. A fuzzy intersection is the lower membership in which both sets of each element. So it's a lower membership, sir. So what does it mean? As you can see, mathematically shown below here. So uh, the fuzzy intersection of both two sets A and B. So you have your membership of A, membership of B. So you have just now early on, we talk about the height uh, one eighty cm, and then belongs to the set of a tall man, which is about 0.5, and then the other one was about uh, uh, belonging to the membership for average man, average man, which is a 0.1, right? So you have 0.1 intersection between 0.1 and 0.5, right? So what is the membership when you when you want to calculate the intersection? It will be 0.1, smaller of the two, right? The first, so the fuzzy intersection of two fuzzy sets A and B can on the same universe of discourse. In our earlier case, was on on the height of the man. So this is a representation. You have this intersection, right? Basically, it's the n function. It will be the minimum of the two. You just compare which one is smaller, right? You compare the A and the membership for A and membership B, and you take the one which is smaller. Union. So in the union, uh, your you'll be based on for the crypt sets. The question you ask is which element belongs to either set. Again, for fuzzy, because of the fuzzy nature, you ask how much of the element is either set. So you look at the membership instead of saying which, which element belongs to either set. So it's yes or no in the crypt set, but for the fuzzy, it will be the, element, uh, the degree of membership. So the union of the two crypt sets contains, consists of every element that falls into either set. So for example, the union of tall men and fat men. So you have basically want to look uh, how many tall and fat men contains all men who are, who are tall or fat. So it can be either tall or fat. So in the fuzzy sets, the union is the reverse of the intersection, right? So this is a reverse of the, interse of the intersection. That is, the union is the largest membership value of the element in either set. Union is the largest, you find the largest membership value of the element in either set. So which one is larger? Or largest, huh? the fuzzy operation for forming the union of two fuzzy sets A and B on the same universe of discourse X can be given as this, as shown down here. So this is a symbol for your union. This is basically an all function. So you take the maximum, the largest of the two. Whatever is larger, you take that value. So back, back, back to our earlier example of our 180 cm on the universe of discourse height. So 180 cm will be uh, you have your membership belonging to average will be 0.1. Membership for Paul is 0.5. So you take 0.5. As simple as that. So, uh, okay. So this is your fuzzy sets uh, operations uh, for your uh, uh, shown in a uh, graphical form. Right? So you can see here, intersection is actually between two sets. You take only this one. So this is the smaller of the two. And then some will be, they take the larger of the two. Containment is actually uh, within the uh, within the set. Uh, uh, it's over here, right? Between the set, uh, the larger set. A, not complement, not A will be the reverse of A. So fuzzy rules now. In 1973, uh, Professor Lofi Zadeh, Right, published his second most influential paper. So this is uh, 73, and I think uh, if you want to go into fuzzy logic, you you his name will come up, right? So I think some some books also call him the father of fuzzy logic. It's as famous as that. This paper he published in 1973 outlined a new approach to analysis of complex systems. So he actually looked at uh, using fuzzy logic uh, to actually analyze complex systems in which Sade suggested capturing the human knowledge in fuzzy rules. So he, the same thing as before, but what we studied uh, four weeks ago. How do you capture the expert knowledge? 
instead of capturing expert knowledge as a yes or no, so we capture it in terms of fuzzy rules using the fuzzy membership. So that is a major breakthrough in the uh, uh, development of a uh, fuzzy logic in AI. Okay, so what's a fuzzy rule? Okay, right, surprise, surprise, it's the same as before. I can see here, contains, contains uh, the antecedent, which is uh, if part and then the consequent or the, uh, the, the then part, uh, consequence part. So you have your fuzzy rule can be defined as a conditional statement in the form. So again, you can see here, we're using the same structure to capture the um, human knowledge. If X is A, then Y is B. But uh, you can see here, of course, there's no difference from the earlier one we studied before. But uh, later on, you see that uh, because the uh, A and B is actually uh, defined as a membership function. Right, so A and B are your linguistic variables. It can be tall, it can be uh, uh, short, it can be fat, or it can be thin. And A and B are your linguistic values. So it's actually, uh, uh, as I said before, if speed is fast, if a height is uh, height is tall, a man or a John is tall, things like that. Huh? A person is tall. Right? So determined by the fuzzy sets on the universe of discourses X and Y, respectively. Now, again, so go back to the difference now. The difference between your classical and your fuzzy rules. Classical would be one based on the, the expert system, which we said before, based on the Bayesian rule and those kind of things. And so your uh, uncertainty theorem, right? Uncertainty theorem management. Now, the classical if-then rules uses binary logic. For example, if uh, rule number one, is speed is 100, then the stopping distance is long. Rule number two, if the speed is less than 40, then stopping distance is short. So the uh, variable speed here, right, can have any numerical value between zero to 220 kilometers an hour. But the linguistic variable stopping distance can take either value long or short. So in other words, your classical rules are expressed in the black on white language of Boolean logic. So in the classical rules, as shown here, you're using the Boolean logic, yes or no, or not of long or short, right? So there's a threshold there. You can only belong to either one. You can't belong to both in the classical way. We can also represent now to change the same rules, but uh, not to say, to change the rules, uh, the, the rules itself from the classical to the fuzzy, right, fuzzy form. So you can see here, the rules are the same. Nothing has changed, right? Same kind of rules, but now the representation is in the fuzzy form. So in the fuzzy rules, the linguistic variable speed also has a range, same range as before, which is between 0 to 220 kilometers an hour. But this range now includes the fuzzy sets such as slow, medium, and fast. So here can be your, ah, so medium and fast. Huh? So this is your, uh, the speed itself. So the universe of discourse on, at, at, in, in addition for the linguistic variable stopping distance can also be change to short, medium, and long, right? Same as before. So the fuzzy rules relate to fuzzy sets. So uh, the rules themselves now relate to the fuzzy sets. So in a fuzzy system, all rules fire to some extent. That's also one of the major difference because in the, in the classical uh, expert systems, classical rules, for example, here the classical uh, uh, rules here, if then rules to capture uh, expert knowledge, they only fire, only one. They can only fire or or not fire, but in the fuzzy system, all rules will fire, but to some extent, which is your membership, fire point two, fire point one, fire point nine. Now, if the antecedent is true to some degree, this part here antecedent, right? Then the consequent, oh, sorry. So where am I? Okay. Then also true to some, to that same degree, right? same degree of, uh, because it's a consequent of that, right? So this, you, you, if, your, if your antecedent part fires to 0.5, then your consequent also be firing to 0.5. So let's go back to our example of the tall and heavy man. So this is a tall man and this is a heavy man. So of course, because uh, we're looking at heavy, you'll be in terms of the, of the weight. So your universe of discourse in this case will be on the weight compared to the tall man, which the, which whereby the 
universe of this course will be in terms of height. So these fuzzy sets provide the basis for a weight estimation model. The model is based on the relationship between a man's height and his weight. So we are saying that uh, based on the tall man, if you can build this uh, expert database very well, then I can predict whether you will be heavy or not heavy. So for example here, if the height is tall, then the weight is heavy. This is your expert uh, knowledge. So the value of the output or the truth membership grade of the rule consequent, which is this part here, sorry, this part here, can be estimated directly from a corresponding truth membership grade in the antecedent. If height is tall, then weight is heavy. If the height is tall, right, um, this form is uh, this form of fuzzy inference. So that's why the word comes in fuzzy inference system. FIS FIS uses the method called monotonic selection. Now let's look at this here. So this part here is actually not given. You want to I want to estimate based on my height. What is the uh, what's my weight? So let's take one example here, which is around one close to one ninety cm. If my height is one ninety cm for the tall man. Membership is 0.9. Now, if you then it will reflect back, it will give back the same membership, right? Same membership value, right? Same degree membership, which is 0.9 over here. Now, if you plot the line over here, extend it over here, my estimated weight will be around 95 kilograms. Right, with a membership of 0.9. So in a way, that is a uh, estimation of my weight, which is uh, uh, 95 kilogram. And the same for that. Huh? So estimate my height for a heavy man. So a, a fuzzy rule can also have multiple antecedents. That means that not only one. Right? For example, in this case, uh, if we are looking at the project management, if the project duration is long, right, there's one feature, right? If your EBN area is uh, large and the EBN color is white, then your grade is AA, right? Going back to our earlier example. So in this case, if you're looking at project management, if the project duration is long, right? It's so one feature, project duration, and your project staffing, number of staff you employ to do the project itself is large. And right, another one, your project funding, how much budget you have is now not is not adequate, is inadequate, inadequate. What's the consequence of that? It's telling you that then your risk of your project failure is high. So this is part of your recommended system uh, for your project management. Now, this one actually for those of you who have actually completed your lab, you'll find that this is actually very sim very familiar. This is what you have done in your lab. So this is for uh, you want to estimate how to tell me how much tip should I get to I give after finishing a meal based on two factors, <clears throat> which is on the service of the restaurant, on the waiter or waitress, if excellent, or the food is delicious, right? So the tip is generous. So remember, for this case, we take the maximum of the two two memberships, right? If this is 0.1, this is 0.5, I'll take 0.5. So um, my membership for tip is generous will be 0.5. In, in that, uh, so 0.5 for generous, what's the actual amount I should give? The consequence of fuzzy rule can also include multiple parts, right, which is the multiple consequent. This one we, have, we normally do not uh, do much into this. Huh? If the temperature is hot, then the hot water is reduced and the cold water is increased. So with one antecedent, I can, more, I can control two outputs. I can so hot water, I control also uh, cold water, right? I if the temperature of the water is too hot or temperature of the environment is too hot on the hot day, I would I, I would not want to have uh, too much hot water in my bath, but I want to increase my hot cold water as uh, as, as a result, right? So this one antecedent can control two consequent. So okay, I think just nice. So we actually we can complete on time without uh, uh, overlapping into the next hour. So what have we done so far? We're looking at, uh, we're introduced to the concept of fuzzy thinking. 
rather than crisp thinking, right? Crisp means it's a yes or no, on or off, black or white, right? High or low. To change it to fuzzy. So fuzzy means that uh, you can be both on or off. I can be both black and white. I can be both tall and short at the same time. This is your fuzzy thinking. We also spend some time looking at the different fuzzy sets of containment, union, complement, for example. Then we touch on the linguistic, what do you mean by linguistic variables and how can we also modify the linguistic variables by using something called hedges. Very short, very, very short, not so short, somewhat short. Right? Those are the, what you call hedges. And we actually see mathematically how do, how do these hedges uh, vary or change, modify the linguistic, uh, those are linguistic membership, uh, those membership functions. Huh? If I say short, if I say fast, if I say slow, very slow, very, very slow, somewhat slow, extremely slow. How do they, vary? how do, how does these uh, hedges modify them mathematically? Let me look at this, how do these uh, fuzzy sets operate, right? Again, uh, by containment, by uh, what I call a union, right? So union will be, uh, I think union will be, uh, one of them actually union will be minimum, minimum, uh, union will be maximum and then the uh, intersection will be uh, minimum, right? Uh, maximum for union, uh, intersection will be minimum. And then we look at some of the, how we use fuzzy rules. So in the next uh, lecture, we will talk about uh, more of this and then how we can actually use it in your fuzzy uh, expert systems. Okay, so we've just nicely complete on time. So I'll stop here. Uh, if any questions, and then the rest of you can go off. I will still stay here for a while, especially if you have... Uh, Especially if questions, especially on the this one, this lecture, and also on the assignment. Otherwise, uh, I'll see you guys uh, in the tutorial tomorrow, and also on uh, Friday the lecture when we start a new topic. Okay, bye bye. Oh, Chunyi, uh, how Chunyi's question is: How do we apply the hedges? Uh? Okay, uh, let me go back to the. Slide. Ah, yeah. So, because we, you want to, okay, let me see. Uh, I think earlier, uh, we, okay, here, for example, instead of, uh, for your rules, uh, for your data sets, I, I, I don't, I want to find out, uh, What is my membership to that particular grid called tall? I'm not keen on that. I want to see whether I uh, whether that 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 variable belongs to a class called very tall. Right? So you can see if I instead of using tall, I, I call it very tall now. Right? I can see that uh, uh, okay. So you can see here it will change my membership it becomes smaller now that's how you actually use it uh good question um let me think of another similar better example uh if my ah here right so if i have another one can i have another one oh. no don't have for example uh, slow uh, so if my speed is uh speed is slow right uh so the okay Basically, what it says that I can also change. Uh, I think if I have another one here, ah, so I can have another another class here, very very short, right? I want to find out what's my me uh, membership. So you can have if you have if you have more than three here. So what what do you call that? Right, so to me, it will be extreme right will be very tall. So between average and tall, very tall will be tall. So I just replace it. So in a way, if I have more than three here, three memberships, what do I call those additional memberships? So you can use very tall, very or or what is it? Ah, oh, okay. Uh, not 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 too tall. <laughs> On the other side, will be very very short. Uh, very short. Not so short and short and the average. 
So actually, it's uh, for you to define, to give you more memberships. Chunyi, does it clarify? I think I understand it. Ah, basically, you have to apply it. When you apply it, so what you call it, you can't be playing short again, isn't it? Between short and average. So you call it something. So if you want to do that, so again, you can see the, the, the what you call the, uh, the, the value itself. Uh, uh, the value itself over here, right? So, um, so you know that extreme left here, it makes sense to call this very short, right? Again, I think the flip side of the of the answer is that can I call this short and then call this in between here where very short cannot, isn't it? Because it doesn't make sense. So, very short has to be extreme left, right? Between very short and average. Up to you to to have how how many memberships do you want? If you want of one more, then you start call it short. If you want a few more, then very short, uh, uh, short and not so not 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 so short because average. Then you move on. Any other questions? Uh, we have five minutes more before we stop. Uh, of course, uh, you all can leave and take a break before your next class. And then the rest of you, if you have any questions either on this or the assignment, I'll be most happy to explain. So, so for this one, right, it's not exactly fully complete because there's like these two white empty spaces, right? The in terms of uh, the categorizing, is it? Wait, wait, wait. Let me open up. What do you mean white white spaces? Uh, that, yeah. Because yeah. I uh, I remember that yeah. the other one where they define this empty space to make it like a complete uh thing like that. Uh, oh, what what empty space? Uh, as in like it, it has like very tall, then there's an average, then then tall and then medium, something like that. Is it? Uh, it's a it's a later on on the slide. Ah, uh, uh, not, not this one. Uh, the one where you got all all categories. There were five categories there. Uh, in the end, yeah, yeah, this uh. one. Ah, so oh, this one how, is to show you how does the hedge modify the actual membership. Oh, okay. You see, uh, if I use tall, it will be this mm. line, isn't it? Yes. Right? So if I have 185 CM, what is my membership to tall? It will be, draw a line up here, it intersects at this point, it will be 0.5. Now, if I don't choose the, uh, I don't want to use tall, right? So basically, if I can draw this out, uh, uh, so if I help, uh, hopefully I can draw this. Uh, so I do the same thing here. I, I mean, I repeat the same graph over here. Sorry, uh, the line I can't draw very straight. So be like this, right? Outside, <laughs> like this and that. Then one more over here. Outside, uh, one more over here, right? One more here. This one, uh, right? But the center one, I don't call it average. I call it uh, very average, right? So it will be curved down like this. It will be curved. You, you follow? It will not be... Maybe I can... Uh, hang on. I, I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll try this. I'll, okay, I'll try this. Uh, hang on. Uh. I will try this. I will change the window to the other. I will try this. And do it on the uh, paint. Easy for me to draw. Okay, now, first one looks like this. Oh, no, 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 no good. I shouldn't use this. I should use a, a line. Where's my line? Here, isn't it? My line is here. Ah, line is here, right? This is my x, x, uh, y axis. I have another one. Oh, sorry. Another line here, like this. So now I have a, uh, I have another one. So I have uh, this here. Uh, never mind. I have to, I have to do it. This. Okay, never mind. I, I think I no chance to draw this. One. So like this, and then like this, right? And then another one here, like this, and like this. Now. For some reason, I don't want to use average. I want to use very average. 
So what I do, it will become something like this. <laughs> right? So initially, my, my average looks like this. Now, if I change this to very average, it will, it will not be this straight line. It will be a curved line. Do you follow? Uh, because it's not easy to draw. Oh, I see. It so, modifies the shape. It will no longer be a triangle. It will be a mm. curved triangle. Because mm. membership is actually now, because you see, uh, go, if you go back to the earlier one, the actual, because of this uh, H itself, uh, you, it actually modifies your your... It modifies your membership. The intersection points, right? Yes, correct. So now, as a result, um, okay, I belong to that tall group with, a, with its a 0.5 membership, but if I change that, become very tall, my membership decreases. So how does it decrease? Because I, when I use the word very tall, and don't forget, uh, here, you actually move it back it back. Ah, you see that? Just tall, uh, he heavy man. But if I use uh, this, yeah, if, if my line is drawn here, ah, pen is still here. Okay, if I change this, oh, if I if I, <laughs> now if I change this from heavy to be very heavy man. What happens? My line would be something like this. So if you were to draw this line here, <laughs> so I, I say my tall man, it will now be if I want to map for tall man and, and map it to very heavy man, my weight will be somewhere over here, 120, 105 compared to only 95 or 95. 94 kilogram. Is it clear? Or okay, so uh, so basically when the shape changes, then the X and Y association, uh, change, the mapping changes. Correct, but not the Y. Uh. The Y, yeah. okay. Y is okay. Y is the, also the Y changing. mapping the, the X changes. Ah, correct, correct, right. correct. Because, because this, this, this thing will change, will slope down. And then this is on the very, but there's also another one which is on the concave side, remember? The concave one. Mm, okay, so very very little something. Ah, uh, uh, pages. Where are you? Ah, ah, more or less. Indeed, uh, very very. But the concave one, not not many. It's only two, only one actually. <laughs> more or less, somewhat concave. Which is the square root. Uh, the rest will be, you know, again, it talks back about the, you know, our, uh, the English language, a little short, slight, slightly short, very short, extremely short. Then you have a very, very short, <laughs> you see. So it, it pushes this thing further down, which is the power of four. Of course, you can also, up to you, uh, you can say, I have another one called very, 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 which is the power of five, forces it further down. I see. So, so we can use these uh, preset formulas already. Then we just apply to yes. the system, uh, depending actually, on how we define it. No, actually, if you say you want to now, this is actually when you want to apply to your system. So, actually, up to you to define. You can choose to say very, very is power five. That that thing will stop you as long as you explain. Oh, okay. I see. It's, it's not it's not cast in stone that you have to follow. <laughs> very many must be four, right? Because. Uh. At the end of the day, as I said before, as long as they deliver accurate results, I, you, up to you to call it whatever you want to. So you can play with uh, you know, things like this or play with other things. It's all right. Good. Good question. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. This one much more Welcome. understandable. Ah, fuzzy is quite quite easy. And I find that through the years, uh, most students do very well in the fuzzy. So you all can score very well. The rest... Uh, <laughs> Not so, not so well, but I'm still trying to make you understand for the other topics.
this one actually i think because it's a uh, fuzzy and it's all always similar to how we speak uh, i think most of you can understand what it's trying to say okay so time's up already for those that you want to leave please otherwise um i'll stay here for a while in case you have any questions Bye bye. Right, thank you, sir. Friday. Welcome. Bye bye. I'll be here anyway. Uh, let uh, maybe. I think uh, tomorrow no no, no lab uh, only on Friday, isn't it? Welcome. Bye bye. Final call. Anyone else? Any questions? I can help you to understand better. If not, I will leave. Brenda, your interview is today, isn't it? Or over already? Over already. Was it tough? Was uh, it the answer? Uh, not really tough but for our class most of most of our questions are all our personal comments did they, did they actually try to find out uh, lecturers uh, uh, i know in the other classes they ask the uh, students uh, did the, how do the lecturers teach under this uh, COVID-19 situation? Do they you know are, are they teaching well? Do they cover everything? Do they replace the lecturers things like that? Not in your case, mm, huh? For our for our class, no mention about the lecturer thing. Ah, uh, okay. Mostly on personal comment on the different teaching mode in co in yeah, right. learning and the right. face to face learning. Correct. Okay, <sighs> my my project meeting tomorrow is not today, yeah. Huh? Yes, tomorrow. Actually, just to update you, uh, um, the palm oil fruits uh, have been delivered from Malacca. <laughs> they sent all the way to Sepang in Selangor. <laughs> then they call Lala Move uh, to send over to the uh, Manjun's house on Thursday last week. Mm. Then when they arrived, it was about 4 o'clock. And then Manjun got to work through the night to take all the photographs and then measure the density on the next day until next day. Uh, he still has no time to complete the simulation yet, but I think I'm quite happy that we actually we got the results. Uh, we, we got the data. So now you should be fine in your second semester, in your next semester's work to do the simulation. So you, you don't have to worry about coming in. I think we have, we have the data. Okay. And uh, he, he's using deep learning to to learn the colors uh, to, or to grade. Based on this color, is it uh, ripe? Is it too ripe? Or is it not ripe? But he is not able to combine that with your density, which is a number. So that one looks like it's actually if you can extract the colors uh, from the from the fruits from the images, then of course you can use your flower pollination method, which I think I'm quite happy. I'm quite uh, confident that you can get some interesting results, which we will discuss tomorrow. Okay. Bye bye, sir. Uh, bye bye. Anything else for the rest? I know that notice there's still a lot of you here. No? Okay. Last call. Okay. Bye bye.